Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my clinical biochemistry playlist. Today we are talking about osteogenesis imperfecta. Imperfect, not perfect. Osteo means bone and genesis means formation or creation. So osteogenesis imperfecta is a problem in bone formation. So these patients suffer from many bone abnormalities, such as bone fractures, which can include pathological fractures with minimal trauma, as well as compression fractures. I was carrying a bag from the grocery store or the supermarket, and boom, I fractured my bone. What? Yes, if the bones are weak. What else? Uh, well, remember that your teeth are similar to bones in structure, so they also have teeth problems. They get brown blue teeth discoloration. This is a disease of type 1 collagen, which is in bone, teeth, and don't forget the three bones in your ear. So many of these patients will have hearing loss. And you can argue that type 1 collagen is also in some eye tissue, including the sclera. When the sclera is so thin and deficient, you will see the veins underneath, giving me a blue sclera. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. If you recall from my anatomy videos on bones and cartilages, that both bones and cartilages, as well as tendons, ligaments, muscle, etc., came from the mesenchyme, which came from the mesoderm of the embryo. So, bones come from mesoderm. Bones are hard, cartilages are firm. I want you to touch your forehead. That's your frontal bone. This skull bone is hard. Now I want you to touch the tip of your nose. That's a cartilage and that's firm, which is softer than hard. Bones have type 1 collagen, cartilages have type 2 collagen. Osteogenesis imperfecta disease is a problem in collagen type 1. Let's review the types of collagen. Collagen type 1 is in bones, which include teeth, the ossicles in my ear, and other tissues like tendons, even some eye tissue like the sclera. Type 2 is in cartilage. Type 3 is very flexible, so you find it in blood vessels. Type 4 is in the floor, the basement membrane. As for type 5, you find it in hair and placenta. Here is how you make collagen. Just like insulin, we started with pre-pro-insulin, then pro-insulin, then good old insulin. Same thing here. Pre-pro-collagen, then pro-collagen, and then some many steps before you know it, we end with collagen fibers. Pro-collagen becomes tropocollagen, and then becomes collagen fibrils, and then collagen fibers. Just like muscle fibrils will make up a muscle fiber. One of the steps of collagen synthesis is called cross-linking, and that's the problem in osteogenesis imperfecta. What are other diseases that can affect my collagen? Scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which will be the topic of an upcoming video in this clinical biochemistry playlist. Alport syndrome, which affects type 4 collagen, as well as Menke's disease caused by copper deficiency. To learn about copper, check out my biochemistry playlist or my diet and nutrition playlist. Can you guess what the symptoms of copper deficiency are? To find the answer key, refer to my video on copper. I also have a video on acyroloplasminemia. What does the word cirolo mean? Copper. Osteogenesis imperfecta has many, many, many subtypes. The most common one is inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion, which means one of your parents is affected, the other parent is healthy. Because when it comes to autosomal dominant, the big A is the bad gene, but the small A is the good gene. Doesn't have to be an A, it could be any letter, of course. So here's the parent who's affected, and here's the parent who's normal. Let's do the Punnett square. Big A, small A, that's a sick child. Small A, small A, healthy child. Big A, small A, sick child. Small a, small a, healthy child. How many of the offsprings are affected? Half of them. 50-50. 50% affected, 50% normal. So the ratio is 1 to 1. Osteogenesis imperfecta has many subtypes. The most common subtype is autosomal dominant. If it's not autosomal dominant inheritance, it could be autosomal recessive as well. Osteogenesis imperfecta is a disease that affects one in about 10,000 or 20,000 persons. Where is the problem in collagen type 1? So what would you call the gene? Col for collagen, 1 for type 1. 
and then we have two types or two genes. We have one called COL1, collagen 1, A1 for the alpha 1 chain of collagen. And we have COL1, collagen type 1, A2, which is for the alpha 2 chain of collagen. The problem is usually in cross-linking. Why? Probably due to glycine substitution in the pro-collagen molecule. Some sneaky questions will ask you, is it possible for a patient with COL1A2 gene mutation to have a triple helix structure of collagen? The answer is yes. How come? Because of glycine at every third amino acid. We'll talk about all of this in great detail when we cover the subject of collagen synthesis. These are just two subtypes of osteogenesis imperfecta. How many subtypes are there? About 11, if not more. And sometimes there is a classification based on genetic defects and another classification based on a clinical picture. The patient will present with history of brittle bone. Why? A problem in type 2 collagen. They get pathological fractures. They get compression fractures, sometimes known as codfish fractures. Do you remember the vertebral compression fractures? Yeah, those are evil. So even after a minimal trauma, I broke my bones. Other bone deformities can happen. Type 1 collagen is not only in bones, it's also in teeth. So they get brittle teeth disease sometimes called dentinogenesis imperfecta, due to lack of dentin in the teeth. Bone problems, therefore, I tend to be shorter and my extremities are shorter. What kind of short stature is this? Genetic short stature with decreased growth velocity. Some of these patients have scoliosis, which is bending of the spine side to side. Don't forget that I have three bones or ossicles in my ear, so I can get hearing loss as well. These are the complaints of the patient or the patient's family. How about the physical exam? Bone deformities, short limbs, on ultrasound, in utero, short femur, bending of the bones, blue sclera. Why? Because of the defective collagen, very thin tissue in the eye, such as the tissue of the sclera, revealing the choroidal veins beneath the sclera, so it appears blue, because veins are blue, because they carry deoxygenated blood. Using my tuning fork tests, such as Weber test, Rene test, and Schwebach's test, I can discover that this is conductive hearing loss. A more accurate, of course, is the audiometry. Many of these patients have a characteristic triangular face, tendon instability, because tendons also have type 1 collagen. Some of them have hypermetabolism and elevated basal metabolic rate. If type 1 collagen is in my bones, will my bones get weaker faster? Yes, severe postmenopausal osteoporosis. Since this osteoporosis has a cause, you can call this secondary osteoporosis. Type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is especially evil. It can lead to perinatal death around birth or even before death due to intrauterine fetal demise. There is hypoplasia, decreased growth of the chest cavity, leaving less space for the lungs and the heart, which raises the pressure in my thorax, which decreases the venous return to the heart, which lowers the cardiac output and the blood pressure, all other factors being equal. So type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta can be fatal within the first year of life. But please do not make the mistake of saying, oh, it's type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta, therefore the problem is in collagen type 2. No, 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 it's still in collagen type 1. Please don't forget blue sclera, bone deformities and bone fractures, large soft head but short limbs. This is also similar to another disease called achondroplasia. Don't forget the scoliosis and the short femur. Make sure to examine their teeth. Some of them are opalescent. What does that mean? Different colors. In these cases, mostly brown-blue discoloration of the teeth due to problematic dentin. How can I diagnose osteogenesis imperfecta? History physical exam. But can I do it in utero, before birth? Yes. Ultrasound, look for the short femur, short extremities. And then you can do genetic testing in utero. How come? You need to obtain a sample from the amniotic fluid, amniocentesis, or from the chorionic villi. 
chorionic villus sampling or looking for the defective genes. After birth, how can I diagnose osteogenesis imperfecta? History physical exam, the growth charts can help you because these patients tend to be shorter with a decreased growth velocity. Audiometry can help you for the hearing loss. How can we manage this disease symptomatically? We try to decrease the risk of bone fractures by giving bisphosphonates. Some of these deformities, like scoliosis, could be corrected surgically. Hearing aids for the hearing loss. And some options are available for the teeth. In the next video, we have a great mnemonic on osteogenesis imperfecta. You will find this video in my mnemonics playlist. To learn about bone fractures, download my surgery high yields course. To learn about cardiac arrhythmias, angina, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and others, download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectsnatus.com. I have more than 13 courses on my website. If you do not wish to download them, but would rather watch them right here on YouTube, click the join button, choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.